Yep. Was, wasn't that nice last week when we were done at 1230 every day? Fratelloni's <laughs> Hardware Friday. and Garden Stores brings your Garage Logic podcast. Number 1,323. <laughs> What's this voice? Why are you talking like yeah. that? I don't know. Well, June hell. 11th. Is it Juneteenth today? June 11th? Yes. 11th? June. Uh, 2024, and that that unheralded heat wave of 1956 continues. It was 96 degrees on this day in 1956, and back in 1903, they hit a low of 40 degrees on this day. Well, the swimming season, of course, is well, well here, and I hope you've been taking care of your swimming area with Aquaside products made right there in White Bear Lake. Lake and pond control products that take care of the weeds and the algae and all the junk that the kids don't want when they're swimming. The products are easy to use. They work quickly and they're registered with the EPA and DNR. So here's what you do. Get your phone. Walk down there where the kids swim. Uh, tell Aquaside what you're looking at, what you think it is. They'll help you understand your problem and get you the right products and your place will look great all summer long. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350 or go to Aquaside.com. Hail the flashlight king. Hail you! And now from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner. Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. Yesterday we touched on, but didn't uh, fully expound on, uh, Mary Moriarty's remarks where she was suggesting that moderate Democrats have done a lot of work to make people afraid of crime. and There's really no need to. Well, I have the whole story now, and I would like to read it and then link it to an email I got that's amazing. You ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go. This is from Alpha News. During a May 28 event, Hennepin County attorney, attorney Mary Moriarty explained she believes there's an effort to cause the public to fear crime. Modern Democrats have done a lot of work in making people afraid of downtown Minneapolis. She said there is a concerted effort to make people afraid of crime. Okay. The conversation took place between Moriality and Dr. T. Annan C. Wilson, a Mitchell Hamlin School of Law professor. The discussion centered around being good trouble and activism. White supremacy is ingrained everywhere, Moriarty said. White supremacy is what we all live in. It's the water. It's what we swim in here. You with me so far? Yep. Wilson agreed and took it a step further, explaining his belief that white supremacy is embedded in all public policy, including the Constitution. We have to think about the Constitution as the living will of the white supremacist, slave-owning, genocidal, xenophobic, sexist, homophobic, cis-heterosexist, capitalistic, classics maniacs. Right, Wilson said? He's a law professor at, at a school you should maybe get your kid out of. Moriarty, a white lesbian woman, was elected to Hennepin County in 2022. Her campaign included... Progressive approaches to criminal justice, such as restorative justice programs and alternatives to incarceration. She claims crime is down. She also discussed her advice for current law students, which was to ask more questions. You talk about the rule of law. It's like, what is that? I mean, I kind of wonder why anybody talks about the rule of law now. Was it Roe versus Wade rule of law? I mean, what happened to that? Moriarty said. Yes, you can, Moriarty replied when asked if the public can expect her to seek re-election. She explained that her office has been involved in a lot of good work, including expungement clinics and reevaluating sentences of individuals who are incarcerated. There are so many people we haven't charged or aiding, and uh, there's, there's so many people we haven't charged 
on aiding and abetting, Moriarty said, when discussing how proud she is of the work she's doing. The office used to charge people who were there, meaning at a crime scene, I would imagine, with aiding and abetting. We don't do that anymore. I'm almost I done. Why. And then I have really deep thoughts. Okay. She also pushed back on the notion that she harbors an anti-police bias. I have nothing against law enforcement. I want everybody to be held accountable. But by her thinking, you wouldn't need law enforcement. It, it shouldn't exist. Just forgiveness. Well, she even more of a fruitcake is this phony law professor from Hamlin, Hannon C. Wilson. Hey, go bleep yourself. Finish it. She also pushed back on the notion that she harbors an anti-police bias. I have nothing against law enforcement. I want everybody to be held accountable. That doesn't mean punished, by the way, but accountability is important. Sometimes that's restorative practices. Most of the time it should be restorative practices. However, police demonstrate fragility to any kind of feedback or criticism, Moriarty claimed. Days after the interview, Moriarty's office dropped charges against Londegren for a fatal use of force incident last year, citing her office's inability to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that a crime occurred. Uh, I can't uh, offer you any greater evidence of the mystery than this woman's remarks. Hmm. I would even, uh, I guess she could take this as a compliment I think she's way out ahead of the curve. Hmm? I think she's way out ahead of your average Mysterian. She's saying things that the average Mysterian hasn't even thought of yet. She's coming right out and admitting in concert with this law professor that the Constitution is the living will of nothing but white supremacists. She's, she's admitting mm. that this is a genocidal, xenophobic, sexist, homophobic country. It was founded, it was founded improperly. Now, the, the law, the law uh, professor is saying that, but she's, she's going right along with it. And she, she is way ahead of your average run-of-the-mill Mysterian that runs around with a checkered tablecloth on their head and pretend they're protesting uh, right. Israel. She's way out. Th- she's years ahead of the game here. So this is the direction we're heading. Yeah, she's and- years ahead of the game. She's She sees a society in which the likes of her would refashion it to reflect the idea that we've successfully gotten rid of this flawed constitution. She sees a society in which she would, she envisions a society in which we've we've gotten rid of the idea of crime. I'm, I'm not being facetious. Wow. That's messed. That is terrifying. She's, well, hey, she, prove me wrong. What What is she saying that I'm I'm engaged in hyperbole about? Well, you're not. That's the, but that's the fear. If that if we're the first domino to fall, being Hennepin County, I mean, she's she apparently was asked something about what her advice would be to current law students, and she re, she replies with a somewhat disdainful. Uh, almost cynical view of the rule of law. You talk about the rule of law. What is that? I mean, anybody talk about the rule of law? It wasn't Roe versus Wade, the rule of law. Uh, She's here to sabotage the rule of law. She, you, We all know she used to be a defense lawyer, right? Mm-hmm. Now, back to a very... I wish I would have thought of this. Mm-hmm. A very timely email from Howard Clary's. Uh, he took my advice. Well, here. Mary Moriarty's notion that we shouldn't be afraid of crime is at best absurd. Who in their right mind isn't at least dimly concerned about crime? At second glance, it's, second glance, it's beyond absurd. It's just plain imbecilic. What is horrifying, however, is in what the notion is rooted Marxism and communism, and and it quite clearly is. A while back, and at your urging after a segment of Author's Corner, I listened to the audiobook Child 42. Hmm. To briefly recap, uh, I've advised every GLer to read. Isn't it 44? Child 44. Yeah. I think you're right. Child 44. Howard might have just got the title wrong. Yeah, 42 advised. was the prequel, I think. Yeah. No. No. And 43. 
To briefly recap, the book describes not only the living conditions while living under communist rule, and this was in about the late 40s, early 50s, when Child 44 takes place, but also the propaganda and flat-out brainwashing that was a cornerstone of Stalin's USSR. If you refuted or questioned the propaganda, you were sent to reconditioning camps. Part of the propaganda was there is no crime because in a communist utopia, crime does not exist. If something that was formerly considered to be criminal did occur, the crime was covered up, relabeled as an accident, and the families of the victims were given an officially sanctioned version of what happened to their loved one. This official version contained no hint of criminality or criminal behavior. Why? Crime could not exist if they were to maintain the lie that the communist doctrine is a superior alternative to Western capitalism. The communist people were under constant strain to disbelieve their own eyes and experience. In a nutshell, they were told not to be afraid of crime. Sound familiar? Yeah. Mary Moriarty's thought process is rooted in Marxism, and she has now said the quiet part out loud. And that's why I'm saying she's way ahead. Uh, She's way out in front in this race. She's saying to her Mysterians, follow me. I'm going to say what many of you haven't said. And I'm going to say, don't be afraid of crime. Well, the next step is because there isn't any. And if there isn't any, then you're attempting to live in a utopia, Stalinistic society. And if you haven't read, uh, Rook, who was the author? Uh, Child 44 was? Three names. Something Rob, Rob, right? Rob Tom Smith. Thomas, Tom, <laughs> Rob Smith. If you haven't read them, they're stunning. Well, what Russia was like when we were over here listening to the Beach Boys play surfing songs. It, 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 they're stunning. And it's right on the money what Howard has recapped. The premise of Child 44 was that a child went missing. And uh, there's a guy with a heart, a guy with a soul who appears in all the books. And he, he can't disbelieve what his own eyes and ears tell him. And he, Leo Demidoff. Leo Demidoff. And he has to walk a constant tightrope between trying to bring about what he knows is justice and keeping himself alive with the powers that be with just, just soon get rid of him because he's not willing to believe what they want to tell him to believe. He's not willing to, because he knows the child went missing. I didn't know they made this into a movie in 2015. I didn't either. Yeah, it started, what's his name? Tom Uh, Hardy? Yeah, sorry. Well, it's Child 44, The Secret Speech. You got them all up there for me to read? Uh, No, let me go back. They're all wonderful. And, boy, they're probably worth rereading, even for me, now that Mary has announced that she's not Leo Demidov. She's one of the authorities. And we are the Leo Demidovs saying, wait a minute, you're telling me that we shouldn't be frightened of crime, that you have no more intention to prosecute those who aid and abet, that you think incarceration must be stopped? I'm Leo Demidov, Demidov, and you're not. You're one of the authorities. Child 44 in 08, The Secret Speech in 09, and Agent 6 in 2011. I can't recommend them highly enough. Not to mention, they're just wonderful reading. Yeah, it's a high suspense. Oh, I only read 44. Just, I didn't read The Secret Speech. It's just fantastic yet. stuff. Mm, it's, that 44 book's tough to get through. Because it it's sad. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not because of its literary tone. Oh, no, no. The guy's a hell of a writer. It's just just devastating. You got to set it down. To the human soul to read it. Yeah, and you got to go watch like some cartoons or sitcoms (laughs) in order to even out. But this thing with Mary Jo, the the blame lies solely with the voters. She is not doing anything that she didn't promise she was going to do leading up to the election. You're correct. She won on all of these factors. Right. Everything she's doing is what the voters expected from her, unless they're just completely uninformed idiots. Uh, which, I would say you know, a great percentage of them are yeah, uninformed. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, when you know, they saw they saw the fact that she was a lesbian and, um, you know, that she wants to be soft on crime. And that was enough. They appealed to their wokeism. Yeah. Didn't OK, when you enough. when you well to do people have a cocktail party out on the flagstone patio uh, uh, overlooking Lake Harriet or Lake Calhoun, uh, do, are you approving of her behavior? Because. You know, the beast is going to come your way any minute. They are right up until they're the ones that get the S beat out of them getting into their car. I, I don't know if you guys sense the same thing, though, but I do think that a lot of the people that did vote for Mary, and I, I guess I don't know what a lot means, have buyer's remorse. Well, what, I do they're going to have that. another chance no because Mary that, told this uh, screwball law professor that she's going to run again. The thing Let is, me repeat no- the quote of the screwball law professor. Uh, white supremacy is ingrained everywhere, Moriarty said. White supremacy is what we all live in. It's the water. It's what we swim in here. Wilson, this is Dr. T. Anansi, Anansi Wilson. Look that person up, Rook. Is that a male or female? I have no Run idea. Run by me again. T it's, period. Yep. It's a guy they ran a picture it's, of. Him. It's a guy, yeah. I just I just was on the their website looking at his stuff. I have uh, closed it now, but he's what you would expect. So you don't need me. Can I go back to looking at menus? <laughs> okay. White supremacy is ingrained everywhere. Moriarty said, "White supremacy is what we all live in. It's the water. It's what we swim in here." Wilson, the law professor, agreed and took it a step further. And I note that she pro- she didn't stop him. She didn't doubt him. Wilson agreed and took it a step further, explaining his belief. And he's, he's teaching law students. Explaining his belief that white supremacy is embedded in all public policy, including the Constitution. Okay. We have to think about the Constitution as the living will of the white supremacist. Slave-owning, genocidal, xenophobic, sexist, homophobic, cis-heterosexist, capitalistic, classics maniacs. Right, Wilson said? No, uh, Wilson, I don't say right. I say you're a complete uh, cliche. And uh, these people don't, these people are in the pages of Child 44. Somebody proved me wrong. She is so out in front of the madding crowd now that she's she's their leader. Hmm. Mary is the Mysterian leader of the Twin Cities. The thing is, all of her voters, um, how do I want to put this? Her voters aren't going to know about this episode because the only place it's been published is Alpha News. I look everywhere. It's not in your paper. It's not in the Star Tribune. It's nowhere. Alpha News is the only one that has it. And since Alpha News is the only one that has it, when her voters do find out that it's in Alpha News, what do they say? Uh, right wing That's just right wing bias. Yeah. Right. And it's not in the Minneapolis paper because it doesn't fit the template, which is very dangerous that such a template exists. Because five will get you ten. There are quite a few employees of the Star Tribune who are afraid of crime. But they're going along with the template, and, and this woman is, is uh, not in their sights. This woman is not in their sights to bring back to Earth. Now, they don't uh, see that as their role. I didn't open it up again today when you were reading it, but I read it a couple of times yesterday. Doesn't she mention, doesn't she single out um, middle-of-the-road Democrats her, her, in the, the opening the, the, remarks? Yeah, the lead of the story is... So that's the only way this story is going to get any legs if, if um, Democrats themselves out her. Her lead is... Moderate Democrats yeah, have yeah. done a lot of work in making people afraid. Yeah. So that's the only way this story is going to get any legs and the only way that she's going to not win an election if these modern Democrats that she's criticizing. Moderate. Uh, did I say modern? Yeah. <laughs> well, same thing. Same difference. Uh, <laughs> if they stand up and say, wait a minute. Well, now that begs another great question. Are there enough so-called moderate Democrats to have a voice? 
Hmm. To me, it seems like the legislature is overrun on the Democratic side by Mysterian Democrats. Okay, now here's where we could talk about both sides without even mentioning which side we're talking about. Isn't this happening right now in both parties? Yes. Middle of the road Republicans are going along with Trump. Middle of the road Democrats are going along with the socialism. Yes. It's just the way it's happening. Well, when we come back... And and wait a second, I'm sorry, Joe. And then everybody in the middle of the road, the people that actually used to get things done, the moderates on both sides, we actually used to be able to run this town, state, country. We're not doing anything. Nothing's getting done, and we're getting criticized. And legislatively, those people in both parties are getting pushed away by yeah. their respective parties. Yeah. So yeah. my question is valid. Are there enough moderate Republicans Democrats to who knows to who knows act. are there enough moderate Republicans I mean, who knows it, it, we've got to stand up and start barking wouldn't a moderate Democrat have seen the light on the Nicole Mitchell situation and said we can't continue to portray ourselves as hypocritically this is only going to screw us over if we follow <laughs> they, this. They, they did after they got her vote no, no, I which understand. is the same yeah. thing the Republicans would have done yeah and I would have encouraged it, you know. So I, I'm just, yeah. I saw the uh, road sign the other day for Columbus, Minnesota. Got it. Got it. Columbus. <laughs> what did you find in Columbus? That's where EcoFund ah, supposedly is. I got it. But I keep saying Forest Lake. But I saw, and the road, if you're southbound on 35, you see Columbus, Minnesota, and the next exit is 97, where you go westbound for about a block and a half, and there's EcoFud. Hmm. Home, the electric uh, bike capital of the world, scooters, motorcycles, ATBs, side-by-sides, and great brands. Yamaha, Kawasaki, Aprilia, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Lance, and Bintelli. And uh, also, summer's just starting, Yamaha Wave Runners. Uh, they're the home now to Yamaha Wave Runners. That that's a nice piece of equipment. It's mm-hmm. recognized by the National Marine Manufacturers Association as uh, the only personal watercraft brand to receive their trophy or certificate or blue ribbon. Yamaha Wave Runner inventory. They've got them, and uh, there's two locations. Forest Lake. Look, see, they call it the Forest Lake location. See. Look, it's right say. on, uh, right off 97. You go westbound off the freeway, and it's right there. It's a great store full of youth recreational equipment, helmets, apparel, great service, just great people. You're going to love this store in down in Burnsville on the service road of life near County Road 42. Wonderful website at ecofunmotorsports.com. There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.com org in Arizona 1-800 next step 1-800-639-8783 or text next step to 53342 in New York call the 24/7 hope line at 1-877-8 hope ny or text hope ny 467-369 You know, the investment game can be awfully tricky, especially in these volatile times. And that's why you need the best and also somebody that you can trust. And that's why I rely on Josh Arnold. We know him as Mr. Money Talk around these parts. And he's here for you. So give him a call today for that free 48-minute no-obligation consultation by dialing 952-925-5608. 952-925-5608. Josh has been at this a long time with a track record of success, and he's here to help you. So give him a call today. No 
obligation. That's right. No obligation. It's absolutely free. 952-925-5608. And tell them you heard about them here on the Garage Logic Podcast. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser. Let's here we go. go. Cue the talent. Well, Stand by. The earth is not your mother. The Joe Suchere Show. A lot of guys will go to extremely insane lengths in order to pre- impress a gal, um, cook something in a crock pot for 10 hours, and buy a buy a hot rod car from Japan, uh, spend money on a big house or a, a backyard pond. Keith, Keith from Montana, Kenny from Minnesota. We've been married a long time. Over 80 years, each of us has been married over 80 years. All we have to do to impress a woman is spray down a nasty windshield with Bugs Be Gone and then wash her clean, and that's enough. You have just won a round of Game of Flaws. You've impressed your bride. Don't laugh at him. Hashtag, clean do not laugh. Windshield. Hashtag goals. <laughs> yeah. So you youngsters that are still trying hard and spending money, uh, get yourself over to a Knack Hardware store or a Fleet Farm, pick up a jug of Bugs Be Gone, spray down a windshield, and see if that see if that cheeky poo isn't impressed <laughs> by, <laughs> by your C-Class uh, Mercedes windshield. Uh, the method with the Bugs Be Gone is really easy. You pull into the pump. It's always at a gas station, so everybody can see. You pull in. Before you put the uh, before you hook up the pump, spray down the windshield, coat it really good, then go do business at the pump. By the time the gas is pumping, all you have to do is squeegee the bugs away, and you've got a brand new windshield. The great thing is you can find seafoam Bugs Be Gone everywhere. Your local NAC hardware store, big box stores, auto parts stores, and if you can't find it, get on the interweb and order it. You can have it delivered right to your door. Go to BugsBeGoneWorks.com. That's BugsBeGoneWorks.com. Here's a, a criminal that apparently we should not have been frightened by. Uh, the guy who shot Officer Jamal Mitchell. There will be a large parade today. A uh, uh, funeral cortege is move. Yes. Chris, Chris. listen Hi. closely. Yeah. A okay. large a funeral cortege <laughs> going from Maple Grove to take him to the airport because I think his home is con- is uh, Connecticut. It's going from the Maple Grove High School, which I believe is on Fernbrook, excuse me, Fernbrook, up by 610, down southbound 494 to eastbound 62, where it's going over to the airport. Chris. The Frontline Foundation <laughs> and Garage Logic have once Jesus. again teamed up. Well, I was waiting for you guys to stop talking. I mean, it's. Go well, to Garage Logic. Let's Lo- go here. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. I'm going home. Say it. Go to garagelogic.com huh? right now where you can help donate to the Frontline Foundation, all of the fantastic work that they do. Uh, a lot of you uh, participated yesterday in day one of our fundraising efforts in memory of Officer Mitchell's memorial. So you can find out more. Just go online, garagelogic.com, and uh, the money we raise goes does not go directly to his family. It goes right to the Frontline Foundation so they have more funds to hand out when the worst-case scenarios happen. We want to thank all of you GLers um, that have participated both back in February and yesterday for your donations. We really do appreciate the support. Um, But the truth is, Joe, not enough. No. Not enough GLers. Uh, Who I want to call out today are the businesses. How many business owners are listening right now? I want you guys to cut a check for $1,000 each. I want to raise at least $5,000 today. Let me steal a page from uh, Downing, uh, whose email I I could get to later. You mean to tell me we've got $5 million or so uh, to uh, provide people with grants to buy e-bikes? But it's up to the it's up to us to make sure the family of Jamal Mitchell right. is okay. Wow. Isn't that weird? That's, no, uh, that's I'll I'll carry that burden. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I understand what Downing is saying, and it's unacceptable. But if we want, I mean, that just proves uh, to all GLers, if we want something done correctly, we've got to do it ourselves. 
And it's like so, Matt said yesterday, it doesn't matter if it's five dollars okay. or, or five hundred. Just send it our way. Send it to him. The guy who shot Jamal Mitchell. Let's try and fit him into the worldview of this Hamlin law professor and Mary. The guy who shot Jamal Mitchell is a guy named Mustafa Muhammad. He was he's thirty five, a convicted felon with a lengthy criminal history, with two active warrants at the time of his death. He was prohibited from having a gun. Oh, how did he get one then? Yet court records reveal he repeatedly got in trouble with the law for having a firearm. Court records show Mohammed was convicted of an 06 burglary where he and two other men broke into a woman's home while she was cleaning her apartment. The woman was also assaulted. Now, we just heard Mary say she would not prosecute the two other men that were with Mohammed for aiding and abetting. We don't do that anymore. Mohammed also tried to ditch a Glock 19 when police were investigating an apparent robbery in Minneapolis in 2022. After Mohammed failed to show up for his court hearings, records show that his family seemed to be covering for him. Mohammed's criminal history dates back to when he was 17 and convicted of auto theft. The Bureau of Criminal Apprehension said Mohammed shot Mitchell Thursday night, a week more than a week ago now, as police responded to reports of an active shooter at an apartment complex on Blaisdell Avenue South. All right, now let's let's stop here. You had Mary in this uh, conversation with a Hamlin. Law professor, uh, where did I put his name? God dang it. Come on now. Well, and he is saying... Uh, uh, I've got it here. Um, Dr. T. N. C. Wilson. Mm-hmm. What did I do with the piece? Uh, you got a lot of stuff on your plate today, Mayor. Well, but he, but would would do they think that Mohammed was never guilty of a crime? Did the crimes? Did well, he was, if he has a, if he has warrants, here, I out. have it right here. It was right in front of me. I apologize. Mm. We have to think about the Constitution," said this law professor, "as the living will of the white supremacist, slave owning, genocidal." Xenophobic, sexist, homophobic, cis, heterosexist, capitalistic, classics, maniacs. That's a new one. I don't know what classics, maniacs is. But, but so what is he saying is that, that it's only us foolish white people who look at this Mustafa Muhammad, who killed a black cop, by the way. Uh, is it only us white people who believe that he was guilty of crimes? And are the crimes he was guilty of merely the affectation of power? Are they merely the affectation of white supremacy, which, according to Mary, was in our drinking water? Uh, uh, That what? The rule of law should not have been established? That it's okay for Muhammad Mustafa, Mustafa Muhammad to have behaved the way he did for 35 years, that's okay because he was just rebelling against guardrails that were put in place by old white people in a hotel room in Philadelphia in 1776. And think of how flawed that logic is because had he been put away for the first crime he committed, the rest of them wouldn't have happened. What, what are we to think? I mean, Mary's leading the parade now. She's leading the, the march down Main Street. She's got the trumpet. No more crime. We're all evil white people. It's white supremacy and patriarchy that must be defeated. Then what? I'm being very serious. Did this guy not commit any crimes in her estimation? Probably not. It wasn't his fault. Was it okay for him to steal a car because white power structure uh, put into place in this capitalistic system too many barriers for him to own a car? What am I supposed to think? Was the crimes he committed, the shooting he did before he shot the officer, okay? 
This is the mystery, ladies and gentlemen. We started out years ago saying the mystery is in a... T- and we had no idea there was right, a mystery, right. did we? We just made it up. Because we didn't know. Because there were weird little things happening, like uh, we got to take the picture of the Adobe Church off the seal of Los Angeles County. There were just little things happening. Recess. It's too cold. It's too sunny. Yeah. It's too windy. Remember it was too windy one time? And we weren't even close to it at the time, what was really happening happening because the mystery has now been explained to us by Mary Moriarty, the Hennepin County attorney, and this ridiculous cliche of a law professor at Hamlin. It's been explained to us. They do want, we used to say, the mystery is the bringing about of a country we don't recognize. We came that far. Well, here it is. They wish to bring about a, con- a country, a society, a culture that I would dare say most Americans would reject or would not recognize. But most Americans have not awakened to what's happening. It's right in front of us. It's right here. It's right in front of your eyes, just like the story was that you were looking for. Yeah. I, I'm. I guess I'm supposed to. If I have to follow the template of Stalinist Russia, Mary, uh, I guess I'm supposed to disbelieve Mustafa Mohammed's life. I'm supposed to disbelieve his 35 years, or I am to reinterpret his 35 years. Reimagine. Reimagine his 35 years as merely an oppressed individual who therefore had every right to behave the way he did. I I don't believe that, Mary. I reject that. It's antithetical to my freedom to ask me to believe that. And all you're doing is making him less than. Hmm. Black people, black people, if if the mystery is brought about, you will not be have you will not be done any favors. Joe, all this bitching you're doing about Mary is based solely on the fact that she's gay, that yep. she's queer. That's what I'm hearing. She's you don't a like lesbian. Queer people. You don't That's like queer just people. you white people, uh, straights, you cisgenders bitching at queer people. That's where all this hate stems it's from. like Kanye. George Bush does not like black people. You and Walls just don't like her because she's a lesbian woman. What the hell is a classics maniac? Look, I, look it up. Classics I maniac. Think, I think he meant, I think he misspoke. I'm assuming he meant to say classical maniac. As in, you know, your typical... But is that a group? That, no, no, I think that was not, him just ri- him riffing. <laughs> Classics maniacs, maybe meaning fools like me who still believe in the United States. I and believe in queer, the classical version of the United States. And hate queer people. Classic I, I mani- don't hate queer people. Classic okay. maniac is also a song by Roger Peterson. The reason I'm accusing Joe of uh, hating queers is because of this wonderful op-ed piece in today's Star Tribune. Queer people can be judged on the merits of their work, written by Matt Pelican, who ran against her and oh, is also gay. I believe queer people can be judged on their work. Absolutely. I, I have never Absolutely. doubted that. And Matt is uh, pushing back against Mary with his op-ed today. <clears throat> well, it's a good piece. She's going to run again. She just told you. Look at I've we've this is a this is a, a a groundbreaking day in garage logic. The the mystery at last and once and for all has been defined and revealed. It really has. And I would submit to you that a that a the a, a Hennepin County attorney is as valid a voice to define it as anyone. Hmm. Okay. You know what? Ironically, Minnesota is being looked at across the nation by liberals across the nation as the place where liberalism works, where it's functional, where it's happening. And where, where, it's, and where the Hennepin County attorney wants to take it to the next level. People around the country are propping up Minnesota and Minneapolis as working the way it should. Wow. That's fantastic. 
You know, you you really need to have good windows to look through to see what's going on out there. I know. Open your eyes. Because you got to be sharp. Mm-hmm. You want windows that are, you can see through. I don't want any dust on them. And you want windows that can work. Yeah. You know what I mean by work? What, they go to work? I got one where the crank doesn't work. Oh, cool. That doesn't happen with you Renewal by me. Anderson. If your crank doesn't work, you need new windows. <laughs> Have you seen a doctor? I'm sure He's over 75. It doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> Nothing we can do, sir. Pull I'm him sorry. out to the pasture I'm and sorry, put him up on by Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> They've been in the business for 29 years. They're, of course, affiliated with Anderson Windows, which has been around for 120 years. Yep. And there's a sale on now. You can save a lot of money with Renewal by Anderson. Buy one, get 40% off the next one when you buy four or more windows or doors, plus an extra 129 bucks off each window and door you buy, no matter how many you buy, and no minimum purchase required. That's the beauty of it. If you can only afford to do four at a time, do four one year and do the other four next year. Thank you. Yeah. Offer is good on... What? That's eight windows. That's right. The offer is good on renewals that claim window replacements (laughs) that feature Anderson's engineering innovation done right here. Uh, these uh, these ensemble doors seal weather tight every time for year-round comfort. I know people who have this stuff. It works. It's the best. Keep your home comfortable in all seasons, and also you can cut down on your energy bills. This pricing, this anniversary sale pricing is good through June 29. Learn more at renewalbyanderson.com backslash garage logic or call Renewal by Anderson. At 651-705-6931. Patrick Racy here for the Canopy Group. As you set out to explore Minnesota this summer, don't we all do that? Think about this. There are 234 cities in Minnesota with populations over 2,500. And the Canopy Group currently has clients in all but seven of those. The Canopy Group's experience in all of these Minnesota cities gives them a unique edge in getting you the best home and auto insurance coverage at the best price. The Canopy Group offers 16 insurance companies to match your specific situation, including your zip code, with the absolute best insurance company for you. This is done for you annually because your specific situation may change. It is also true that the insurance company's appetites might change as well, and you might have to change insurance companies. This experience working throughout Minnesota provides thousands of Canopy Group clients the peace of mind, knowing the Canopy Group is working for you. Please visit thecanopygroup.com today. It's the end of the world as we know it, and he feels fine. Joe Souchere. If you have been on the fence, now is the time to act. First, get on the schedule to have my friends at Hofferman Water and Connecticut come out and give you that free, 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 everyone likes something for free, water analysis. 612-895-2440. That's the phone number. You can also schedule your appointment online at HoffermanWater.com. And right now, Hofferman Water is offering their limited time offer of the anniversary sale. You get your whole home offer up to 20 20% off a Connecticut whole home system or a rental offer of free basic installation. Both of those are available right now. 612-895-2440. I've been a customer of Hoffman Water for a number of years. It's made an amazing difference in the quality of my water, and I know it will do the same for you as well. And it doesn't matter. Maybe you're in the mood for a water softener, an iron rust or odor filtration system, or a brand new drinking water system. You give them a call, get on the schedule, and have them come out today. Hoffman Water has been proudly serving the state of Minnesota for over 50 years, please tell them that you heard about them here on the Garage Logic podcast. John Height, please. 
Thank you, Joe. This news brought to you by North American Banking Company. A major vote will be held tonight by members of both the Minneapolis and St. Paul school boards regarding their district budget proposals. In addition to districts in the Metro, the St. Cloud, Mankato, Rochester, and Duluth districts are seeing shortfalls. In Minneapolis, the district faces a budget shortfall of at least $110 million. They're considering cutting some programs in addition to more than 200 full-time employees. Their meeting is set for 530 where the board is expected to vote on a resolution with a plan to balance the budget. Across the river in St. Paul, the board will host a special meeting at 4 p.m. Earlier this year, the school board said they're facing a $107.5 million deficit, but a proposal was made for staffing cuts to address it. Last fall, the district was projected to be in the red by more than $150 million. A uh, very horrible ending to a story out of Hopkins. Police say the body of a four-year-old boy who went missing on Sunday has been found. Hopkins Police Captain Craig Kreiling announced yesterday a volunteer helping with search efforts recover the body of Wayas Ali Mohammed. Earlier in the day, crews had blocked off a portion of Minnehaha Creek near Chorus Apartments in the area of Blake Road North and 2nd Street Northeast. While an investigation is still underway, Kreiling noted Mohammed is believed to have left on his own accord and died from an apparent drowning. A GoFundMe for Mohammed's family was created to help in part with funeral expenses. Update to a story we talked about yesterday. New information has been released about what caused that ship to begin taking on water this past weekend on Lake Superior. The ship, a nearly 700-foot-long ship, began to take on water Saturday morning, requiring assistance from the United States Coast Guard to help navigate it to a port in Thunder Bay. Now, with the ship safely docked, Coast Guard investigators report they didn't find any evidence of a collision, as was previously reported. They now think the incident began due to a structural failure. The reported failure caused a nearly 13-foot-long, quarter-inch-wide crack to form at the front of the ship, which then led to the vessel taking on water. The ship is currently undergoing repairs and evaluation. I said I seen that ship. Yeah. But I think I seen another one. That yeah. meant the right. That meant the same. I one. didn't see that one. <laughs> another. Which one did you see? Then I don't know which one I seen, but I seen one. But I don't think it was that one. I don't think she got in there yet. Ah. You know. You know, another one bugs me, and my kid's guilty of this. Instead of saying um, <clears throat> it was an accident, he'll say it was on accident. Uh, I, I, you know, on accident. On there. A lot of the young kids say on accident. My. I have the same argument in my house, Kenny. The same Wait, with thing. on it, where did that come from? Put that light no on idea. off. Put the what? Put that yeah. light on <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've That's... never heard that before. Really? Yeah. Put the light either. Put, put the light, the light on <laughs> off. off. <laughs> Another of the defendants I, in the deadly. I took the I took the wrong exit on a, on accident. On accident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can relate. <laughs> Completely. Doesn't make sense. I just want to clear up. I didn't see. I see in a different ship. Right. <laughs> and I'll call him one? on it. I'll call him on it, and he just smiles at me like he's fishing. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get an argument if I call him on it. But you know. oh, <laughs> all right. Another, Continue, sir. Thank you. Another of the defendants in the deadly shooting inside the Mall of America sentenced yesterday, as previously reported, 19-year-old Levon Longstreet entered a guilty plea last month to one count of aiding and abetting second-degree murder and one count of aiding and abetting second-degree assault. He was sentenced yesterday to more than 30 years in prison and received 511 days of credit. The shooting happened during a busy shopping time just days before Christmas in 2022. Shots fired inside the Nordstrom store December 23rd, leaving one person dead, another injured. Police say Longstreet and another person, Tayshawn Adams Wright, shot and killed 19-year-old John Tay. Hudson. Adams Wright was sentenced just last week to serve more than 30 years in prison. Two 17-year-old juveniles were each charged with one count of second-degree riot. New state law will stop Minnesota law enforcement from asking you a certain question during a traffic stop. Law enforcement officers can no longer ask, do you know why I pulled you over? Under the new law, they have to tell the driver why they initiated the stop. I always so, thought that, I'm not just jumping here, I always thought yeah. that they did that because then you would have admitted guilt. You stopped me because I was speeding. You stopped me because I rolled the stop sign. Is that You're not wrong. true? I'm wrong? Okay. Some community organizations <laughs> believe the question put the case driver. closed. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Mary. Get Thank out you, of Mary. my court. Mary. <laughs> I always just say I have no idea. That's what you yeah. should say. Uh, I don't know. No. And sir. also, sir. for those of you driving in St. Paul, between Marshall and 
and 94 <laughs> on Creton Avenue across from town and country. It is a major speed trap last week and this week. They've got six vehicles out there, so go 25 miles an hour. Years and years ago when Jay Coles was still married to Rebecca Coles, they were traveling down highway, I think it's 200, way up in northern Minnesota, and they got pulled over, and the, the cop said, do you know how fast you were going? And before Jay could lie, uh, Rebecca yells out, 84. <laughs> and they got a ticket for doing 84. <laughs> wow. So later That's they got divorced. Huge. Yeah, that was the beginning of the end, wasn't it? John, back to your story. The, the, the Minnesota Police Chiefs Association said uh, it's not as big a deal as it used to be. Uh, they said most departments have moved away from asking the question anyway, and they start the interaction by telling the driver why they were stopped. What What's the rationale here? I'm puzzled. What, who what do you cares? Mean? What difference does it make if the cop says, do you know why I stopped you? Well, why it was, not? The, like, well, the organizations yeah. said they uh, it would cause the driver to incriminate themselves in something. Yeah, because it's not like so rookie, right. will, yeah. rookie will say, well, it's probably the dead hooker in the trunk. Jesus. Right. <laughs> right. She was the one smoking the weed. It wasn't me. I yeah. was informed by the man who raised me that said, if you're asked that, you say, I'm about to find out. Right. Yeah, do you know why I pulled you over? I'm about to find sure. out. That's a good. Yep, that's, that's what he always one. told me to say. Yep. Yep. I was whenever I've been stopped, I always end every sentence with "sir." Well, I always oh, yeah. just say, "Don't you dare uh, try to charge me with anything." I know my rights. I don't have to talk to you, and I <laughs> no. speed away. I got a way <laughs> better one. Take one of those this guys yeah. while filming them with your right. camera. Your yeah. Get your mug yeah. on this camera. And the hell with you. I don't believe in. I'm a Mary Morieri supporter, and right. I don't believe in crime. So how do you like that? This on TikTok, there, there, sir. There are guys who make a living out of putting those on YouTube. I know. They oh, just I on know. purpose get stopped. Yeah. They won't roll down their window. They'll film. God, they're everything. so irritating. Just, the yeah. percentage of my reply, my first reply when I'm asked that question, isn't quite successful. Are you stopped Be often? Yeah, when they'll say, do you know why I stopped you? And I'll say, I don't know. Why don't you call your ma? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. I don't well, know. you should do the why Jesse don't voice. Me? I don't know. Why do you why tell you me? Stop me? I don't know. Why don't you tell why me? Why don't you, you call tell your me? mother? <laughs> call your mother right now. Gosh, what? I might know. I don't know. What other uh, <laughs> local story here? I can't wait to Go hear ahead and stop story. me. Why don't you tell me why? Why did you stop my Tesla? I should have gone yeah. uh, ridiculous on it. No, ludicrous. That's when you got to have your seatbelt on and you got to go back like you're an astronaut, like you're Neil Armstrong what? heading to the moon. You know, <laughs> that lunar surface where you weigh about um, one third of the weight that you weigh on Earth, you know? <laughs> Each year, you the, know, the dark side of the moon is lit every once in a while. Sometimes a uh, they'll have a um, what are those you things called? You see the cops' faces. Like, what the hell see, is he, he would just say, about? "See you later." Yeah, I, Never mind. I, was, I was governor once. You know, yeah, I had troopers uh, covering me, and I had tried to sneak out to Tiffany's down on Ford Parkway in St. Paul. Tiffany's <laughs> 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 in Sports Park. Yeah, the the, Mon, the Mon Pettit family was yeah. very generous to me yeah. in my campaign. Okay. Okay. All right, may I go, officer? Yes. Where am I going to go? Why don't you tell me? <laughs> All right, Johnny, you got it. The, uh, uh, I've been waiting uh, to read this story just to get your guys' reaction. East year, the Institute for Quality of Life creates an index of the happiest cities on the planet. <laughs> Crabby coffee no. shop story here. The yeah. ranking created on the basis of thousands of indicators thoroughly developed by our researchers, they say, that directly relate to the quality of life and sense of happiness of its residents. Importantly, we do not analyze the happiness of an imaginary individual at every location in the world, but people who actually live in the cities. Number one in the world... <laughs> number one in the world, Auris, Denmark, the happiest city in the world. Now, just a few spots down, the reason I'd love your guys' reaction is the top uh, happiest city in the United States is just a few uh, spots below Aris, Denmark, and it is Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. Okay, John, who, who is responsible for this? Uh, that is the, uh, let's see, the Institute for Quality of Life. Well, they're idiots. Well, if <laughs> you're living here on the government's dime, it's a pretty damn good place to live. Yeah. You would be happy, too, if you didn't have to work. This sounds like white supremacy. At sure. that's, why I, that's why I wanted to read this story. That why sounds like sick cis something. Yeah. yeah. Cis 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 you, pal. Cis 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 why, don't, why don't we take a break on that note and come back with some national, international news.
Yeah, we, we got to get to Mr. Biden. We haven't had many roofers join us on Garage Logic, but Pete is with us from Hire a Pro, and he wants to explain to you how they do what they do. Joe, last year we helped a lot of GLers keep what a roofing company would have otherwise taken in profits. We showed everyone behind the curtain, and the average homeowner kept about $5,600. Minnesota had a huge hail year in 23, and there's a lot of people who still have roofs to replace. Let's sit down and look over your claim together. We'll show you labor, material costs, how much profit is on the claim, and what you would keep for getting a permit and writing out a couple extra checks. Not a bad ROI for letting Hire a Pro manage a project for you. Oh, and lifetime manufacturer-backed warranties? Yeah, we got those two. So tell me, if the options were us or someone with no transparency who takes all the money, would you go anywhere else? Uh, probably not. So hit us up. Worst case is you don't like transparency and you'd rather pay full price. So if insurance has approved your roof replacement, give these guys a call at 651-402-3400 or visit them online at hireadotpro. That's hire, ah, uh, and then put the dot there, Pro. Keep bringing it. Yep. Keep trying. Okay. Here's uh, a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Souchere. In uh, some national and international news, Hunter Biden has been convicted on all three felony charges related to the purchase of a revolver in 2018 when prosecutors argued the president's son lied on the mandatory gun purchase form by saying he was not illegally using or addicted to drugs. Jurors found Hunter Biden guilty of lying to a federally licensed gun dealer. Uh, he faces up to 25 years in prison when he is sentenced by Judge Mary Ellen Noriega, although first-time offenders usually do not get anywhere near the maximum. It's unclear whether she would give him time behind bars. I do know that you're going to say nothing will come of this, which may or may not sure happen. But there was I was listening this morning. There was a, a lawyer that said that that all might be well and good, your theory. But the problem is he's now facing tax charges right at California or something. Mm -hmm. And because this will be on his record, it ups the amount of sentencing that he could get. He's in. never going to jail. No, no, no. But because he already has this on his record. Right. That the other. Trump's charge... never going to jail. Well, right. This Not... guy's never going to jail. Yeah. Uh, this will be on appeals for the next 40 years. Whatever what? happened to that laptop thing? I have no never idea. Never happened. That's a Russian hoax. Oh, was that okay. in the basement of that pizza place where Hillary oh, was yeah. a childhood to a pizza. Uh, deal? Yeah. Say, do you have uh, our president uh, appear to uh, struggle a bit at a Juneteenth? We're already having Juneteenth celebrations, even okay. though Juneteenth, uh, I believe, according to the Garage Logic newsroom, is the 19th. 19th, yeah. But I guess Biden and Kamala uh, were shaking it up, shaking their money makers. We already had a. <laughs> Ooh, a little yikes. festival or something, and and poor Biden, serious now. He he appeared to go Mitch McConnell on the thing. Yeah, he just didn't. There really was a move. dance line, and he was a statue. He was his hands didn't move, nothing moved. He I, went uh, he went Mitch. I think they were playing freeze tag. <laughs> oh well, he was the only one You're who was obeying the rules. Yeah, he won. So, but well, do you have his remarks? I have a couple of different clips, Joe. This is the president talking about the founding of our ideals. These black soldiers were a link in the distinguished line of patriots, enslaved and free, who risked their lives in every war since the founding, since the founding of our ideals. We don't know fully what American soil is. What? Quality and freedom. These black. Hi. Uh, this one is about, well, I, I, I'm not sure. They're all ghosts in new garments trying to take us back. Well, there are. Mm -hmm. Taking away your freedoms, making it harder for black people to vote. Or have your vote counted. Closing doors of opportunity. Jesus. Attacking the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion. If you can believe it, banning books about black experiences. Okay. Trying to erase and rewrite history. And the final Man, doing he is, that? he's just really selling the uh, race industry Who BS. Who is doing that? Yeah, I'm, it's a lie. Those are lies. Well, I'll play the last clip then for you. Tell me if this is a lie. She knew no no so long as she was denied. Our what? freedom can never be secured. Do that one again because yeah. I didn't quite get it. No. Is this a lie? She knew no she knew so long as she was denied. Our freedom can never be secured. Why don't you tell me what he said? <laughs> Why don't you tell me? Tell all of subtitles? Us. What the hell did he say? Well, Joe, will you listen, please? I'll try. Please listen. 
She knew, long, she knew so long as she was nine, our freedom can never be secured. Uh-huh. Amen. Wow. Right. You, said, right. it, you brother. said it, brother. Right. Put that on a T-shirt. That's right. And I'm buying it. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> start capturing Trump. He makes just as much no sense. Well, he did have uh, just as much no sense. Just as much no sense. <laughs> just as much no sense. Put me on there too. <laughs> I don't know if uh, I don't know if this was yesterday, but this clip surfaced this morning. All right. And by the way, isn't that breeze nice? Do you feel the breeze? Because I don't want anybody going on me. We need every voter. I don't care about you. I just want your vote. I don't care. See, now the, the press will take that, and they'll say, he said a horrible thing. And you know what? They did. Yeah, they, they did. did. Yeah, he was right. He was just joking. What, did, what did they say? That, that he doesn't, he doesn't care, care about you. About he him. just wants your vote. He's, he's your being vote. honest. I don't care about you. I just want your vote. Right. That was honesty. But they, they all, yeah, right. They all mean the same thing. Right. right. But but somebody, it wasn't, somebody, 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 right. Somebody, yeah. Yeah. You speak <laughs> Biden? Yeah. What part he said. Of, <laughs> that speech where his teleprompter went out, did you see that part? No! He, he, did, he did the sharks and the boat thing again. If you have an electric boat and it starts sinking <laughs> and you don't want to get electrocuted, should you jump in the water to the sharks or should you just stay in the boat? Well, now that's a good question. I've been wondering he, well, that that's, quite he's, a bit. He's gone to that a few times. A few times. Oh, um, well, I'm seeing the, a clip. But it's calling it a nonsense salad, which is actually a very funny line. Well, let's let's hear it. Um, oh, yeah, that, that, hang tight, that hang down. Tight. Let me cue this up and take it away, Mr. Trump. Yeah. And no terrible. I tell you what. And I hope the military. I hope the military revolts at the voting booth. I went to a boat company in South Carolina. The boat. I said, how is it? He said, it's a problem, sir. They want us to make all electric boats. So I said, let me ask you a question. And he said, nobody ever asked this question. And it must be because of MIT, my relationship to MIT. Very smart. He goes, I said, what would happen if the boat sank from its weight and you're in the boat and you have this tremendously powerful battery and the battery's now underwater? And there's a shark that's approximately 10 yards out of there. By the way, a lot of shark attacks lately. Do you notice that? A lot of shark. I watched some guys justifying it today. Well, they weren't really that angry. They bit off the young lady's leg because of the fact that they were, they what were the hell? not hungry, but they misunderstood what who she was. These people are crazy. Huh? He said there's what? no problem with sharks. They just didn't really understand a young woman swimming now really got decimated and other people to a lot of shark attacks. So I said, what? so there's a shark 10 yards away from the boat, 10 yeah. yards yep. or here. Do I get electrocuted? You feel the break? Uh, who wants to do another shot? Let's do shots all around. I think so. <laughs> One more round. <laughs> Oh, we well, just yeah. have a wonderful country and such a strong, so wonderful choice for president. Just a we, great, great choice. I was going to say, we laugh, but... Yeah. yeah. This is our guys, yeah. our two guys right there. You know, speaking of that, I have a question. If he wins this election, President Trump, if he wins again, will he be allowed to run a third time and serve if elected? Or would this no, count as no. two? You only get two, he'll no be, matter when they're. He'll be okay. face down in the taters before that ever happens. They're both <laughs> going face down, down face right down into the, the gravy. Taters. Well, John, right unless, you're FD, unless you're FDR, right? <laughs> well, there was no law then, Kenny. There wasn't a law until after FDR. That's why they made the law. Because well, I'll FDR. retract that last statement. Well, technically, isn't Obama pretty much running the show through the puppet? Well, somebody he is, is yeah. because yeah. this, uh, <laughs> this poor guy here, he's... Uh, He's looking at Let the me, moon, uh, thinks it's a bowl of spaghetti. <laughs> During, <laughs> now, uh, despite recent polls showing uh, President <laughs> Biden looking at the moon, picking up percentage points in the presidential race, his approval rating is still severely underwater. On Monday, Biden notched the unpleasant distinction of recording his lowest ever mark in 538's weighted tracker, which he found he has an, about a 37.5% approval rating. That comes as polling shows as worrying signs his support among non-white voters is falling. His opponent, by the way, apparent opponent anyway, for the presidency, not doing much better, according to the same poll. According to 538's weighted average, Donald Trump has a 41.6 favorability. Well, you look at rating. both of them. What in God's name is there to approve of? Yeah, well, Nothing. Right. Zero. Rien. Yeah. <laughs> 
the uh, bridge in Baltimore. We talked a little bit about the bridge yesterday, uh, but uh, we have cleared everything out now. The channel is fully reopened. That's about 11 weeks after the cargo ship lost power, slammed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, shutting down the nation's busiest waterways. Six construction workers were killed in the March 26th accident. Uh, now, we still don't know. The U.S. Car Army Corps of Engineers said even with the channel clearing and restored to the way it originally was, when the bridge will be rebuilt. The last uh, thing I saw said perhaps two to four years. So... And Joe, you were wondering why it would yeah, take Yeah, so we long. used to do those things pretty quick, but I guess we have a little longer now, a little longer yeah. process. Yeah. Uh, you want cynical? Yeah. Here's, a, here's cynical to the nth degree. For months, Yaya Sinwar has resisted pressure to cut a ceasefire and hostage deal with Israel. Behind his decision, messages the Hamas military leader in Gaza has sent to mediators show it's a calculation that more fighting and more Palestinian civilian deaths work to his and Hamas's advantage. Fight yeah, between us. That's, that tactic's been, um, oh. that's an old tactic, I should say. Yeah. John, can uh, I add a uh, sports note to conclude your newscast? Sure. The Edmonton Oilers should get swept. Uh, they're down 2 nothing, and I'll tell you one reason why. They're playing like the Wild. They don't shoot. They pass it back and forth on the point, into a corner, back to the point, back to the other point, into that corner, back to the point. They don't shoot the puck. They will lose the Stanley Cup. It's the only gotcha. time I yell at my TV, and they never score on power plays. It's pathetic. Ever. They're if, very good at defending Oh, my the power God, play. they make me so mad. They will not they, win this. They might I not should win be a running. game. I should be running the wild. They too. don't <laughs> shoot. Good yeah, things happen when you shoot. Kenny, can you skate? But, <laughs> I can skate backwards faster than Such can tie his skate. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, but the, uh, the wreck. If I may add to the Edmonton Oilers story, mm -hmm. uh, remember the flasher? I sure yes. do, John. We, we know who she is now. Who is she? She's identified only as Kate, and she was tracked down by Barstool Sports oh, Spitting Chicklets podcast on Monday after her identity was long shrouded in secrecy. Asked what inspired her to, uh, well, do what she did. She said, you know what? I don't know. If you don't know, we did talk about this. She, uh, in the midst of her uh, happiness Excitement. about Excitement. Edmonton, pulled up her shirt and revealed what was under She shirt. has also deleted all of her social media. Yeah. In other words, she, she didn't was. do it to become a big celebrity. No. No. She no. just did it on the spur of the moment, feeling goofy. Yeah. She told them, quote, the handful of cheesies that I ate all day and the eight Trulies I drank in the first period <laughs> was inspiring. Oh, <laughs> she said we were all going crazy. It wasn't planned or anything. And, yeah, it just kind of happened. And now uh, she also answered the question that, uh, you know, you guys brought up on the air. Are they real or not? They're real. For real? Kenny said no, right? I, right. I said right. no. I said yeah. no. I don't, have an, I don't have an opinion. Kenny and Chris are correct. They're yeah. not real, she said. Really? <clears throat> That's um, what she there said. Goes my standing yeah. as a professional. I think the most important <laughs> part of that story, John, is your mention of the podcast Spittin' Chicklets. Yeah. Joe, you would love that podcast. Why? They always have old hockey players on telling oh. old hockey stories, and they are fantastic. They're pretty good. I, I have sat down just meaning to watch a you know a thirty second clip. Three hours later, I'm still watching Spit and Chicklets. I just love that podcast. Is it owned by Barstool, Kenny? I don't know. Okay, it's, it but they get good stories out of old players, and it's fun. Cool. I mean, you hear it in Sioux Falls? Yep. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. You can hear us in Sioux Falls. So if you move your business there to get a better tax break, I'll miss you, but you can still listen to us, right? I got you. You can leave one of the worst tax climates in the United States if you're looking to change or relocate your business and move it to the second best tax climate in the nation, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. You can increase your profits in Sioux Falls. Streets are safer, the schools are award-winning, the commutes are shorter, it's a vibrant, growing downtown and a pro-business attitude, and a motivated workforce that's ready to help your business grow and increase your profits. Escape the high taxes of Minnesota by planning your expansion or relocation to Sioux Falls. Maybe 2020, maybe you've had enough. Let's go. Maybe you've just, you're filled up to here. Done. You're filled up to here and you're looking around. Go to Sioux Falls Development, that's one word, 
SiouxFallsDevelopment.com. It's a it's a different world and a different experience. Check it out at SiouxFallsDevelopment.com. Here we go. Cue the talent. Stand by. It's the end of the world as we know it, and he feels fine. Joe Souchere. Fighting chance she wouldn't know what ice is. Oh, heavens no. <laughs> Which team am I cheering for? <laughs> so does it drive you crazy like it drives me crazy? Panthers, Vegas Knights. God, I just hate it. It makes me so Well, let's angry. do it this way. The Stanley Cup has been in Raleigh, North Carolina, Tampa, that's, Florida, Miami, Florida, Dallas, Texas, oh, Los Angeles, Anaheim, and the Wild didn't make the playoffs this year. Oh, Wait till it's in Salt Lake City. Oh. Well, believe me, that might happen before the Wild get there. The Yeti. This was a watershed day in Garage Logic. I really mean that. It's been very eye opening to discover what we always anticipated or thought, at least I did that the mystery was all about the unfounding of this country, uh, deconstructing it and starting over. And Mary Moriarty, I think, is ahead of the curve. She's admitting that uh, crime basically is the affectation of white patriarchy. The one thing she said, and we didn't talk about, well, I'm is getting her, to that right here. Yeah, that last three paragraphs. She said, police demonstrate fragility to any kind of feedback or criticism. Look, lady, for 42 minutes, all you did is display your fragility to feedback and criticism for your pursuit of trying to prosecute Londrigan. And you're a hypocrite to come out now and say the cops demonstrate fragility to any kind of feedback or criticism. That's what you did, Moriarty. You're a hypocrite. Is the there a difference? Order. Is there a difference between accountability and punishment? Because she says there's a difference. Uh, she said, I want everybody to be held accountable. That doesn't mean punished, by the way, but accountability is important. Well, because she'd say that accountability could be achieved through restorative practices. Right. That's exactly what she said. Yeah. yeah. But it's the equivalent, uh, equivalent of saying noted. I mean, it means yeah, nothing. Yeah. It means absolutely nothing. But we had to get back to her. She can't be let off the hook for this nonsense that cops are fragile to any kind of feedback or criticism. Well, if they are, no more so than you. You know what she should do? She needs to do a ride along with the Minneapolis police so she can see for herself what it's like. Yeah. I wonder if that would even make a difference. It wouldn't surprise me if she's, she's done one. That would not surprise me. But you, you, thank you, lady. You have uh, opened our eyes. You envision a country that we would not recognize, and that would be the successful bringing about of the mystery. I was just thinking. Imagine being the cops, you know, for the ride along with Mary. Okay, we need some volunteers who who will take uh, the attorney. Uh, <laughs> Oh, God. Me, well, I'm, yeah. uh, I'm tenured. I can't do it. I don't feel good suddenly. I Tell me it's over. not a struggle for the troopers that have to, you know, work oh, with God. the governor. Yeah. Do you know well, who's uh, making a fortune off artificial intelligence? Who? I do. Do you? Only because I heard about it from Mr. Money Talk a few months ago. Facebook? The most popular phrase of 2024 has to be artificial intelligence, which is abbreviated to AI. Every major corporation is talking about how it is using AI, and this has created a huge demand for new web addresses that end with AI. Web addresses that end in two letters are owned by individual countries. For example, French countries uh, end in FR and Italian Countries end in IT. You may be wondering what lucky country got the domain identifier AI? The United States of America. China. You may be wondering what lucky country got the domain <laughs> name identifier of AI? It's got to be China. That would be the GL's most favored nation. Anguilla. Come on. Really? Anguilla was assigned the AI identifier decades ago. The official web address for the Anguillan government is simply www.gov.ai. 
Until huh. recently, Anguilla was making sixty grand a year registering and renewing AI web addresses. That income has now skyrocketed to fifty million per year because anyone around the world who wants an AI web address must register it with Anguilla. Oh, I love it. It's good to be the king of AI registrations. Anguilla has decided to use that windfall to implement a major tax reduction for its citizens. Do you realize this is why we love our secondary country? I guess. That's our adopted. They have completely eliminated property taxes for homeowners. Compare that to Minnesota, which last year had an $18 billion windfall from excess tax collections. The average Minnesotan got a one-time Walls check that might cover dinner for four at Applebee's. Yeah. The rest of that $18 billion is quickly spent by the DFL on permanent new spending programs. Nobody got a tax cut. GL may be number one in Anguilla, but Anguilla remains number one in the heart of taxpayers. Here, here. Tim Buck, too. Isn't that amazing? That's fantastic. Uh, we have, we're number one in Anguilla. Number one. New Hallelujah. And now no, Anguilla is number one in our hearts for its tax policies. Right. 15,000 people live there. Well, they don't pay property taxes because the government's taking it in on their domain money. I love that. I wonder what their What's fiber next? optic is like. Could I actually do this <laughs> from there? I don't know why we couldn't. I don't know why we couldn't. Why don't we do the show for a month this winter from Anguilla? Did that happen because it, the the spies that, listening were? Uh, Joe, did you hear that? Yeah, you did that yourself. <laughs> I didn't touch a thing. That was not wow. me. Mm. What? I, and I left too. <laughs> Say it again. I was gone. Say that sentence you said again. I uh, wonder if they have fiber optic in Anguilla. I could do the show from there. <laughs> Right. What was that? Uh, <laughs> that was me from the cabbage soup yesterday. I'm oh. still feeling the effects. <laughs> Sorry, I had my mic on. A little too close to my body. You say a whole month, Joe. You know what else we should do? Why not a month? We should start doing the show at 11 a.m. And we should talk about having what? Fridays off. Yeah. I can't wow. let this. I can't end the show without noting this. Is it long? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Elephants... <laughs> Give each other names. They call oh, each other by name. Hey, Larry. What are you doing? Hey, Clubfoot. What's up? <laughs> These are the uh, the names are part of the low rumbles that they can hear over long distances. Wow. Scientists believe that animals with complex social structures and family groups that separate and then reunite often have to be often may be more likely to use individual names. You got that wrong? Got Are it. you too busy there? No, I just uh, received a uh, text from work that I have mm-hmm. to address. <laughs> it's extremely rare for wild animals to call each other by names. Humans have names, and our dogs come when their name is called. Baby dolphins invent their own names called signature whistles, and parrots may use names. But now we know that elephants hmm. have names. How do we know how they call them? Well, they use hey, n- Come over here. That's not an what? elephant. They're three stooges. What, what, what was that? I don't know. The Larry Moe and Curly of elephants. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hey, Larry, who's got the peanuts? <laughs> see, they got. Oh, elephants. see, they're in like a bag. And no. then there's always the joke. What did the elephant say? I, the I don't really need that joke. That's but, not that very impressive. You know, you elephants are very peanuts. social. They're always talking and <laughs> touching each other. The naming is probably one of the things that underpins their ability to communicate. And uh, I just think that they're uh, a wonderful, wonderful creature. Yeah. And I love them dearly. That name they're thing, fun. though, that can cause some problems because it leads to bullying, like when we call Chris Little Trunk. Yeah. You know? Right, exactly. <laughs> Happens often. Hey, hey LT, what's up? Isn't what's that, up? Wasn't that the story where you were writing one and the teacher said, yep? That's right. Yep. Weren't you riding an elephant? I did ride an elephant, yeah, to the circus. From Minnehaha Park, where it got off the train, I rode it to Met Sports Center. And wasn't there a hey, former uh, teacher? I saw the teacher, and she looked at me and thought I, I knew as much. Yep. Okay. 
Can we end on a solemn but good, positive note? No, we're going to end with uh, this day in history. Go to my Twitter account where I just posted pictures of uh, people already gathering on the overpasses oh, wow. over 494 to honor fallen officer Jamal Mitchell. Boy, retweet. They're already gathering. They're going to be shutting down southbound 494 between the Fish Lake split and Highway 62 at 2 p.m., for about anywhere up to two hours, for up to two hours. It's Only such a bummer <laughs> that an event like this has to remind us of how much, regardless what the media says and Black Lives Matter, is how much we support the guys and gals in blue. Amen, brother. Yeah. Yep. Only, right. and the renewal by Anderson brings you, only because... They come to us all the way from Eden Prairie and the traveling linemen. It was on this day. Joe, today is June 11th. Thomas Williamson and Alexander Huggins organized a church at Fort Snelling, probably the first Protestant church in Minnesota. Although Gordon H. and Samuel W. Pond had started their Dakota mission the year before, they hadn't organized a church. The French had a Catholic mission on Lake Pepin, in the 1700s, and Father Lucien Galtier established a Catholic Church of Mendota in 1840. The First Presbyterian Church of Minneapolis descends from the Fort's Church. Hmm. It was on this day 611. that the Minnesota Territory was divided into three judicial districts. The First District, the region between the Mississippi and the St. Croix, uh, held court in Stillwater and is presided over by Aaron Goodrich. The second were the lands north of the Minnesota River and west of the Mississippi. Uh, they held court in St. Anthony with Bradley B. Meeker as judge. And south of the Minnesota River is the ju- was the territory of Judge David Cooper, whose court was in Mendota. Hmm. And, and on this day... On June 11th. In Wadena County, named for a trading post, uh, Wadena County, named for a trading post on the Crow Wing County, Wadena County. Spit it out, (laughs) President Biden. Named for a trading post on the Crow Wing River was formed. There you go. She knew so long as she was nine. What? (laughs) Exactly. In 1877 on this day. On June 11th. The Tom Brown Football Association, an exclusive club for football players, was formed in Minneapolis. In 18... On this day... How long ago? (laughs) Phrase it in the form of a question. I forgot the bit, didn't I? On this day in 1899, in an effort to control speeding bicyclists, the St. Paul Police Department established a squad of 12 bicycle officers to patrol the roads and sidewalks, keeping the public <laughs> safe from scorchers. The speed limits were set at 6 miles per hour on sidewalks and 8 on the streets. The speeders were called scorchers, Matt. Yep, scorchers, speeding on the streets. <laughs> on this day... I think scorching. he's already at... He's already at the airport, Joe. Scorching. On this day, airport, yeah. 1945, <laughs> Nellie Stone Johnson, union organizer and activist, was elected to the Minneapolis Library Board. She was the first African-American elected to a citywide post in Minneapolis. <laughs> you can go, Matt. Okay. It's all right. Yeah. You can you can go. Let's call it a day. We're, we got her today. Yeah, thank you. Did you do this day yet? I just did it. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, let's go to the promo book, shall we? Let's go to the promo book and oh. let's go to garagelogic.com. Yeah. yeah. Kenny yeah, was yeah. talking about people gathering, and if you can't make any gatherings, you can certainly make a difference by donating. Garagelogic.com. Frontline. I don't care if you're going to give five bucks or. F- 50,000, whatever the case may be. Business owners, we're looking at you. Yep. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Garage Logic YouTube channel. And also, the Daily Logician is your best way to stay up to date on all things related to Garage Logic. Sign up now at garagelogic.com.
it is that time once again that we pick up that phone and we make that call to our guy, Mr. Money Talk. Josh Arnold is with us to check in once again right here in Garage Logic. And now is the time for you to do the same. So do not delay. Do exactly what I did and pick up that phone and dial 952-925-5608. That number once again is 952-925-5608. You call that number, you get Josh. And he is there for you for that free, yes, I did use the word free, 48 minute financial consultation with absolutely zero obligation and he will always give you the straight talk he will never give you the sugar-coated advice and he is on the line with us once again here in garage logic and josh it does still continue to be about the fed and you've got an update on your favorite fruit company today i certainly do have an update on my favorite fruit company and my favorite fruit company is not gamestop please stay far away from that company gamestop stay far away. That's not my favorite fruit company, but stay far away from that. Do bear this in mind. Before the market opened on Friday, GameStop was trading at $69 a share in pre-market trading on a lot of hype about Roaring Kitty and what he might say when he gave his presentation on Friday on YouTube. But Roaring Kitty was upstaged on Friday by GameStop itself, which came out with their earnings announcement several days prior than than when they said they would and said app sales are down 29 percent we're still losing money and oh by the way because the stock is up we're going to issue more shares to keep us going GameStop, which again prior to the market open on friday was at 69 dollars a share as we speak today 24 dollars a share 24 so just shy for those people who had to get GameStop before the roaring kitty went on youtube those people are out a significant amount of money on a company that is losing money seeing sales declines and is operating in an area where there's plenty plenty of competition. Well, there is going to be a lot of competition for dollars tomorrow afternoon. Market is down as it has been every time the Fed gets set for their meeting, which just takes place what about 10 times a year. So the day before the Fed's meeting, and the press conference by the Fed chief, the market has sold off. Today, the Dow is down 210 points as we speak, led by Boeing and the banks, J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs. So fears that the Fed might continue their higher for longer policy. And I don't know why that's fear. It's already out there. Last week, the jobs number higher higher than expected. More people were, were working, even though unemployment went up. But more people were working and they were paid a little bit more money. True, if you look at the number of people who are employed and new jobs coming from the government, coming from hospitality and also coming from health care services. Those have been the three leaders over the last several years. It's not so much coming from expansion in private industry, but jobs are still jobs. People are still making money and the Fed is still concerned about inflation and higher prices across across the board, despite the fact that the economy is slowing down as measured by the GDP number. The bigger worry in the marketplace is not that the Fed is going to be higher for longer, although that is a concern, but is the Fed's higher for longer going to stall the economy out so that we have limited growth and a lot less liquidity. And that could could not be a good thing. But in any case, do be prepared for the Fed's actions and market reaction over the next several days. And we're also in that period of time when there are fewer earnings reports, which won't start again until early July. And then we're coming into a difficult market period, what with vacations, and free election talk. So a little bit more volatility over the next several months could be expected. As to my favorite fruit company, yesterday was the start of the Worldwide Developers Conference, and Tim Cook gave what I thought was a pretty good keynote 
speech and talked about artificial intelligence and the uses of artificial intelligence and how Apple was going to integrate that into their products so it would make it easier for people to use. They did talk about an upgrade to Siri so that Siri, instead of being one way, ask a question, would become a lot more conversational. They talked about some of the other features that uh, AI, generative AI, would bring to your iPhone and to your personal use of the of the iPhone. Some of these features could uh, require some higher capacity and new chips, which could start and probably, I don't like to use the word will, but could would be a better, better term, could start a several year upgrade cycle for Apple's phones, which could increase sales, we'll say from 2% to 5 to, to 7%. And that would be huge for Apple's a bottom line going forward. Yesterday, analysts were, eh, no big deal on on these new enhancements, uh, including Apple signing a deal with OpenAI to integrate their chat GPT into Siri with plenty of privacy features. Today, a few other analysts came out and said, huh, we thought about this overnight, and we agree with Josh and local analyst Gene Munster of Deepwater Management. Apple's an announcement was a huge thing. Uh, Gene Munster of Deepwater said that Apple's announcement yesterday was as significant as the iPhone and iTouch announcement back in 2007. Big, big stuff. Apple broke through $200 and my price target is still $250, but that could go up. Excellent advice. As always, Mr. Money Talk, you heard him, GLers. Now is the time for you to pick up the phone and make the call for that free 48-minute financial consultation by dialing 952-925-5608, where you always get straight talk and never, ever sugar-coated advice. Josh, as always, thank you so much for the time and the chat. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again on Thursday. Look forward to it. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser.